what for and all i dr jyoti kudnapur coordinator research club welcome you all for the 41st research club meet mm -hmm. now i request to dr subangla patil professor head department of physiology to uh, uh, to welcome the today's 41st research club meet uh, very good afternoon and a warm welcome to our distinguished speaker of today's professor chang we ming sir uh, sir we cherish your uh, uh, moments of my moment with you in the comic challenge and our oh. one of the participant in the day they are all your fans yes sir they are all your, yes, all your fan <laughs> yes sir okay, <laughs> yes i i welcome you sir to for this today's 41st uh, uh, research club we are the university department of physiology and i also welcome uh, vidya madam uh, professor and head anesthesia department who is chairing today's session and i welcome all the uh, speakers who have joined various uh, phd scholars and uh, mangala gunatilakke madam who was our uh, previous uh, chair speaker for this research club so welcome oh, madam you. mangala madam and i also yes, welcome thank you very much yes hi madam. mangala Hi, hi, yeah. Prasenn. Nice to be see you. And nice to see you, Mangala. Uh, nice yes. to see you, Prasenn Das. Thank you for inviting me to join this meeting. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Yes, sir. It's a pleasure, madam. And I also welcome all other uh, clinical faculty of VLD University who have joined for this meeting. Welcome you again. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now I request to Professor. Uh, Dr. Vidya Patil, uh, Head Department of uh, Anesthesiology, to kindly introduce our today's distinguished chair uh, speaker, Professor Ming Cheng, sir. A very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, it's indeed my privilege for having got this opportunity to introduce a person of this great stature, Dr. Cheng. let me give a brief uh, brief biography of uh, dr chang dr chang has taught physiology at the university malaya in kuala lumpur since 1986 he all, he is interested in understanding how students think learn and in helping them unmask misconceptions in physiology his books his books include thinking through physiology and defining physiology dr chang is also the initiator of the annual international physiology quiz here i present dr chang thank you ma'am now i request professor kusal ki das sir to uh, to say few words yeah thank you very much dr jyoti chairperson dr shubangala and today's a chair person of the session uh, dr mrs vidya patil and all my dear colleagues students doctoral post doctoral students and all my colleagues it's a great privilege actually professor yu bang cheng cheng is here professor cheng is i think that anyone should feel nervous when he stand or sit in front of a quiz master that to also a physiology quiz master on being physiologist but see his smile he always smiling so that makes a uh, overcome the fear of all other physiologists to stand in front of a giant so this is a great honor for me personally and to me professor cheng is a very close because he he was my predecessor in international union of physiological sciences so he was an iups education committee member before i i am there so he is my i am his successor but no where i succeed anything near to him <laughs> just uh, we can match with professor cheng stature and all the things so but he is always guiding force for me and giving a big understanding of subjects knowledge and with the versatility his immense contribution to build university journal of health sciences series of paper he has published with his students scholars colleagues that itself is a great actually the archives of bld journals are very much uh, enlightened and it is been really enriched because of his contribution so as an editor in chief i like to thanks on behalf of my university my medical school to professor cheng for your immense contribution to our 
health science journal and support it all the time. Thank you, Professor Cheng. So this is the research club, which we conduct every month in the last week of uh, the month. And this is the 41st meeting. We invite the people of his uh, distinguished people, but not always physiologists, it is a cross-sectional. We invite the cancers, cancer specialists, oncologists, cardiologists, all the fair branch of people. So this research club actually, uh, we make the common discussions in a very interesting and lucid way, not exactly the didactic lecture as such, but because of the COVID now, it has been restricted to the didactic part of it, but we have an interactive session. So thank you very much once again to giving me a chance. I think everyone should enjoy and being enriched, uh, being a medical school teacher with Professor Cheng himself is an outstanding student. He did his PhD from University of Glasgow, Scotland, and uh, is an extreme because I was in I, I was in Edinburgh and Leeds, and he was in Glasgow. So we have a feelings of the northern side of the UK. So that's the Professor Cheng is here. Thank you very much, Professor Cheng. Thank you, Dr. Jyoti. Thank you. Sir. Now I request uh, Vidya, Madam Chairperson of today's uh, session, to kindly take over. Uh, may I now request Dr. Cheng to give us his lecture, please. Right. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for uh, having me uh, this afternoon uh, or evening here in uh, Kuala Lumpur. It's uh, just past 6 p.m. And uh, yeah, so uh, thank you, Prof. Kusau, for asking me to speak to your colleagues and also your students. Yeah, Dr. Shamina has joined, Professor Cheng. Dr. Shamina from... Ah, yes, I saw Shamina, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. That's okay, right. go ahead. Hi, Shamina, yeah. Hi, so, hi, good uh, to see you. Thanks, <laughs> Professor Kusal. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so this is an uh, informal um, sharing among colleagues as well as students. And uh, it's quite a nice time to be asked to speak uh, at the end of the year because I think for most of us, we uh, use this time to take stock and uh, reflect on our own academic journey as well as our own personal lives. So, uh, so I've decided to just uh, tell very briefly an overview of my own journey as a teacher and, and obviously the title of the talk, uh, Unlocking Physiology and Crossing Borders was, uh, were, were inspired by the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so, uh, so I'm going to just talk uh, on these two aspects of uh, my own activity as a teacher uh, besides being a, a researcher. Uh, so let me just share the slide. Let me see, I hope I can get it. Okay, great. Okay. So there's the first slide. Uh, okay, I should uh, maximize it, right? Yeah, you should maximize. Full screen. Okay, can you see yeah, now? Fine, fine, fine. It's come. That's great. So, um, so this is, uh, yeah, this is in Cairo, uh, where I went, I think, but two years ago, I think, for my, my first trip to Egypt in Cairo, and obviously carrying the physiology bag, Acta Physiologica here, right? So, so this is a picture, just by way of introduction, of my a large university campus. It's very green and very beautiful. So I hope that some of you uh, post-COVID days will come and visit Kuala Lumpur. Be happy to be your host and show you around. And, uh, and this is the uh, Department of Physiology, as you can see here, spelled in the, the Malay, uh, uh, Malaysian language, Japatan Physiology, Department of Physiology. And this is what I call the corridors of knowledge, because it leads right to the dean's office at the end of this corridor. And it's a very long corridor, at least three times this length on, on the other side. And, uh, and we don't normally have this Malaysian flag flying outside the department. We're not so patriotic. This is uh, taken during the National Day. <laughs> so, 
and the flag is there at least for a week. So our national day was 31st of, of August. Yeah. So the flag is there. So it makes, makes a nice picture that uh, the, the, the home of a Malaysian physiologist. Yeah. So let me introduce uh, just very briefly. These are some of my uh, younger colleagues. The one on the extreme right is the new head of department. Well, not, not so new now. Dr. Ho has been heading it for the last four years. And then Dr. Felicita in the middle and Dr. Lee. And, and it's nice to introduce uh, the two on the left because they were my former students. So it's always very nice to, to, to have your former students come back to be your junior colleagues in the same department. And I think it, it has enriched the, the department to have your students coming back to, to provide both the research and the teaching. So let me start by uh, giving you a timeline. Uh, this talk was given uh, partly in 2017. So the timeline only reaches to 2017, but obviously this is 2020. So the picture of Snoopy here. So 1985 was my first year in October 1985, where I started as a junior lecturer. And so now it's 2020. So it has been more than 30 years of doing research as well as teaching in the in the same place, <laughs> same department of physiology, uh, Faculty of Medicine, University of Malaya. So I put here a picture of Snoopy reading and, and, and the picture of the year. And this is because I, looking back, uh, at least the first part of my teaching career has been spent basically just interacting with students and listening to them. And, and during those early years, there was a lot of time to read. And this is a, I call this a luxury now because now with increasing KPI, Key Performance Index and uh, Standard Operating Procedure, many of my younger colleagues are actually burdened with a lot of paperwork and do not have the luxury of having the time to just read and read and read. And, and also the time to interact with the students and to listen to them. And I say this because um, much of my uh, insight into understanding physiology and in the introduction by the chair lady, uh, understanding how students think or how students commonly have uh, difficulty with certain areas is as a result of spending time listening to them. And uh, so this is just um, as a result of listening to them, was able to uh, release the first question book on cardiovascular physiology in 2002. And since then, uh, it has been uh, very fulfilling to publish several other learning titles. So on this aspect of learning, uh, I'm a Malaysian Chinese, although I uh, studied in the British, uh, British school, the, the, we were under the Commonwealth. And so my education was very much in English. But I want to just uh, show you a picture of the Chinese character for, for listen, to hear. And it's, and I think most of you would realize that the Chinese character, the pictorial picture has, actually it's very rich in meaning. So every component actually means something. So if you look at this word for listening or active listening, this one in orange actually denotes the year. And this one is actually the symbol for the mind. And here is a, in blue, it's a symbol for the eyes. And this is actually the symbol for one or undivided attention. And this is the picture in yellow of the human heart. So even if you look at the human heart, you see that this actually looks like a ventricle, doesn't it? There you have the left ventricle and the right ventricle. And the stroke on the left here could be the venous return. And the stroke on the right here could be the cardiac output. But anyway, the whole word actually uh, involving the ear, the eyes, the mind, and the undivided attention to, to, to listen to another person is something I think we all as teachers continue to, to learn and to, to improve, I think, in, in listening to our students. And so, um, and so recently, uh, during the COVID months, uh, I was very pleased to be asked to write a little uh, story about my own um, Activity, activity as a teacher for the British Physiology Society. 
and it was a special educational team issue. And this is a summer issue. I'll be happy to send you the PDF uh, uh, after this. And this was the title of my talk. And basically on the same idea that as we listen to our students, we actually develop what I call a homeostatic teaching. We receive feedback from the students and we improve ourselves. So this was a paper um, in a summer issue just released, I think a few months ago. And basically to show how we can engage and excite our students into the order, beauty, and design in physiology. So for this morning's, uh, this afternoon's sharing, I just want to just, uh, just very briefly divide it into the first part of unlocking physiology. One is to unlock and help students to see patterns and design in the volumes of information that is ever increasing for them. And secondly, uh, unlocking uh, difficult uh, misconception that they commonly encounter. And the third one is unlocking curiosity and helping them to appreciate and be amazed and, and wonder at the marvels of physiology. So very briefly, just one or two examples of each so that I can move on to the second part about crossing borders as a physiologist. So first one, unlocking patterns and design. So um, this was a similar kind of talk I gave in Myanmar. So you can see here the picture of the beautiful young, uh, uh, pagoda in Yangon, the beautiful symmetry. And if you look at nature, you obviously see beautiful symmetry. And obvious, obviously when we talked about unveiling symmetry in physiology, we're not talking about a physical anatomical axis. We're talking about, uh, you could say a homeostatic axis. And so I just give you one example of the uh, importance of the transmembrane potassium gradient and how that gradient is used repeatedly in many different uh, processes and events in physiology. These are all very familiar to all of us here as teachers. So let me just run through it very quickly. So this is just in words during that lecture, several key events in physiology involve a reduction in the efflux of intracellular potassium cations, which then depolarizes the cell contributing to the cell specific phenomenon. So I'm just gonna run through what you already know very well. This involvement of a reduction in the potassium efflux as a repeated functional pattern in symmetry. Uh, pacemaker potential, chemoreceptor sensing, glucose sensing, and the unique hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. So this, I think, is very familiar. The pacemaker potential involves, obviously, three cations, two involving the influx of sodium and calcium, and the other contributing factor is a reduction in the influx of potassium, all three contributing to the slow spontaneous depolarization. Next example is, uh, is I think something which Prof. Kusau is an expert in. Uh, and this is the chemoreceptor sensing. The same thing, you have this uh, subtype of potassium channel, which is sensitive to hypoxia or ATP. It, it closes and then you depolarize the cell. And then the next stage, voltage related calcium channels open, calcium comes in and that releases by exocytosis, the uh, neurotransmitter onto the sensory fiber. And again, this repeated pattern in um, glucose sensing in the beta pancreatic cells, you have the same kind of idea where the glucose comes in, produces ATP. You have this subtype of ATP sensitive channel. It's very similar to chemoreceptor sensing, depolarizes the cell, calcium comes in through voltage catered calcium channel. And then you, in this case, you have exocytosis of the insulin hormone into the bloodstream. And then lastly, uh, what we tell students that there are always unique exception uh, in physiology. And this is the unique hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction, which is obviously important, not for metabolic reasons, but for ventilation perfusion matching in the lungs. So again, uh, sensing of hypoxia by the pulmonary vessels uh, involves voltage. Uh, These potassium channels 
which are sensitive to the low oxygen, it closes, potassium accumulates, depolarizes, and then you have the same repeated uh, pattern of the opening of voltage-gated calcium channels, calcium channels, and the increase in the intracellular calcium then causes the vasoconstriction of the smooth muscle. And so we see uh, this one example, how we can encourage students to not be overwhelmed with the uh, increasing amount of uh, information, especially uh, cellular physiology information. We help them to see that they are organizing patterns, order and beauty in physiology. And the next slide is uh, again, another way in which we can uh, actually imagine for the students and this is actually a paper that I wrote to the BLDE journal and with an interesting title called To Pee or To Poo. <laughs> so this is that there are very similar functional uh, relationship between the GI tract and the, and the renal physiology. Both involves a long journey, both involves epithelial cells. And so let me just show you one slide, which is also mentioned in that paper. So this is to pee and to poo, cross organ principles and mechanisms in renal and gastrointestinal physiology. So he has a cartoon here, a little humor here. So basically uh, the idea here is that if you look at the efferent arterial, it, it, you can see that as the beginning of the long nephronic journey. And so the efferent arterial obviously controls GFR and then the filtrate goes through a long renal handling processes. But the pylorus, which is also a smooth muscle, also denotes the beginning of another long journey. And this will obviously be the, the intestinal colonic journey. Here we're talking about the chymic flow, which you could, you could use the word intestinal and colonic handling of this um, product of digestion. And so we try to help students to see that as they uh, appreciate some of this common functional symmetry. It makes learning more interesting. Let me move on to the second one, and that is unlocking a misconception for the students. And one of the best way I found over the years uh, is as a teacher, uh, one of the best way to probe and to unlock misconception is by formulating uh, good physiology questions. So I think I spent half my life making <laughs> physiology questions, not only for the physiology quiz, for exams, but also just making them as uh, like a hobby. <laughs> so, and so as a result of years of doing this, we were able to publish um, a series of books called Physiology Question-Based Learning. And so this is one of them. And uh, there are two volumes, Cardiovascular Respiratory Renal. And the second volume is on the other three system, endocrine, and gastro and neurophysiology. And one of the kind of question, uh, there are many style of question. We've all gone for this educational seminars that, that, that promotes different style of questioning. But one of the way in which I found useful is to design uh, what I call a WWW question. Uh, this is why, what's wrong? So basically I've compiled a list of statements that appears correct. And this challenges the students because if they just read it loosely, they tend to say it's true, but on further examination, it's actually not correct. So let me show you, this is just a list of questions. Let me highlight in bigger font, this sentence here. This is one of my favorite sentence. It says the ECF sodium concentration is controlled by the hormone aldosterone. Now, obviously for most students, if they see sodium, it is and they see aldosterone, they are like brothers and sisters. So immediately they'll say is correct. But because of the word here, concentration, it makes the sentence actually incorrect because ECF, total body sodium is controlled by aldosterone, but not, um, sorry, sodium concentration is not controlled by aldosterone, but actually by the hormone ADH. There's a difference there. So because of this common confusion, even among my students, between the control of sodium balance and sodium concentration, we've actually summarized some of the different situations and scenarios in which students find difficulty. And again, I've, I'm very thankful for Prof. Kusau to give me the platform 
to publish a paper in this journal. And this is the paper uh, using the yin and yang called Students Lose Balance Over the Yin Yang of Sodium Physiology. And I think these students, uh, this paper, I've been able to distribute to my own students as well as to some of my junior lecturers in order to help them to appreciate the difference. So, um, so in this Corona time, I've actually, uh, in my free time, uh, in my partial lockdown, uh, come up with a slogan, which I think you would appreciate. We're talking about sanitizers and uh, social distancing. And so this is for you who are teaching renal physiology. Kidneys are sanitizers and sodium distances. Obviously, in negative sodium balance, the kidneys will absorb more sodium and excrete less sodium. In positive sodium balance, the kidneys actually excrete more sodium in order to, uh, to restore the volume. So uh, let me just give you another example whereby we try to help students to appreciate how, uh, how the right concept about understanding different areas of physiology becomes useful for their understanding. This is in respiratory physiology, uh, understanding the different categories of hypoxia. So let me just skip this and skip that. So this is, uh, this is playing on the pun. Let's take a selfie. So this is two cells taking a selfie. So hypoxia, I tell the students, is defined from the perspective of the cell. So, and this is how the students can appreciate the four different categories of hypoxia. So if the oxygenation is normal, but if the cells cannot use the oxygen, it is considered as, as hypoxia. So in histotoxic, there's nothing wrong with the lungs. There's nothing wrong with the blood flow, but the cells cannot use oxygen. So for the cells, it is hypoxia, histotoxic hypoxia. For stagnant hypoxia, again, there's nothing wrong with the lungs. There's something deficient in the blood flow. And so from the point of the cells, it is not receiving enough oxygen per time. And so we call this stagnant hypoxia. And obviously, anemic hypoxia uh, is when the, uh, the total amount of oxygen associated with the hemoglobin is insufficient. So helping students with this concept that the hypoxia is defined from the perspective of the cell. So over the years, helping students to unlock misconception and to define and use the language of physiology carefully. Because sometimes a basic definition, which is not rightly understood, affects their understanding of physiology. And so this was the reason why we begin to write a series of books on defining physiology. The first volume I'm going to show in a short while it has already been released. So this was written together with one of my former students. It's always uh, nice to include them. And this is the first volume uh, by, by Springer, Cardiovascular, Respiratory, and Renal. And the second volume hopefully will be released in the new year. It will be on neurophysiology and gastrointestinal physiology. So, uh, so this is uh, what we've been doing. So let me move on. Uh, to the third one, and this is uh, unlocking students' curiosity and helping them to engage while they are listening to us in class, whether it's large class or small class. And I think one of the prob problems or difficulty uh, in, in this time is always to be able to try to distract the students from their distraction so that they begin to listen to what we have to tell them. And so one of the things I found over the years is that the element of surprise uh, challenges and engages students. So in the course of your lectures, small groups of tutorial, you present them with, with some information which, is, which may surprise them, okay? So this is just uh, in one of my talk, the element of surprise engages and challenges. Isn't that true? And uh, we hope that there will no, be no big surprises come next week, uh, January the 6th, when the Congress will have to confirm for the one last time uh, the decision to have Biden 
<laughs> as the new president. <laughs> okay. So let me give you one example. And this is, um, so I tell the students uh, to, in order to engage them, the carbon dioxide is not just a metabolic product. It's not just a waste product. When we use the word waste product, it gives the idea that it's not useful. But I give them a value, and that is in small parentheses here, the total amount of CO2 in oxygenated blood, about 50 mil per 100 mil. It's actually more than the total amount of oxygen, which is 20 mil per 100 mil. So this gives an indication that you must be doing something more than just being a metabolic biochemical product. So these are just some of the things uh, we can mention to them. The CO2 is a principal chemical respiratory control in the, uh, via the central chemoreceptors as well as the peripheral. And at the same time, the muscles become more active. The CO2 actually vasodilates in the active muscle and so provides a matching increase in the blood flow. So this is a nice coincidence. And obviously, we, we tell the students about more effect. So a metabolic product actually promotes more unloading of oxygen to the cells. And then obviously carbonic acid and CO2 is a major determinant of the major extracellular fluid buffer. And obviously in the bigger picture of human ecology, the respiratory, respiratory tree that releases CO2 is used by the trees and plants around us to generate the oxygen for our use. And just one example before I move to the crossing border section is, uh, this is a talk given in Bali, uh, talking about some of the marvel and wonders in skeletal muscle physiology and using this late, latest movie uh, the, from the Marvel comics and uh, using the word end game. So the end game is obviously the final consumer for in, in physiology, which is the cells and the tissue. But let me just mention one, slide from this talk. And this is the skeletal muscle metabolism leads to vasodilation and increased perfusion. So it, it amazes students when you tell them that all the local parameter changes and muscle metabolites are vasodilators. Whether by coincidence or by design, this is obviously physiological. As the muscle becomes more active, the pH changes, the uh, CO2 changes, and the production of substances like adenosine, all vasodilates in order to match blood flow to the greater metabolism. So, so the other thing that we do uh, in our teaching is to try to help students to unlock themselves from being restricted to PowerPoint learning. I don't know about your students, Increasingly, uh, students do no, no longer read books. They just read the PowerPoint. <laughs> and, and as long as they pass the exam, that's good enough. So, so this is a slide. Uh, this is the title of a talk, actually. Teaching, uh, thinking, and learning outside the PowerPoint box. And some of the things you can do, and as I've done, is to try to be innovative and creative and just Give you one example, and this is to list down some of the major principles about osmolarity. And I just call this after the story of Moses and the Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments of Osmosis, like osmosis. And uh, next slide is, is another concern that we have as teachers after teaching for more than 30 years that increasingly uh, my own students, I'm not sure about your students, do not write as well now because everything is, you know, uh, visual. And so they are, and in learning physiology, you actually do need to be able to write and express physiology uh, explanation clearly. And so this was a paper, I think the, the most recent paper uh, published in BLDE journal called the Write Physiology, Thinking and Inking Physiology. So let me move on to more pictures and so this is one of my favorite cartoons. Sometimes I lie awake at night and I ask, is life a multiple choice test or is it a true and false test? And then a voice comes out to me out of the dark and says, we hate to tell you this, but life is a thousand word essay. 
and so is physiology. So let me move to the second part, and this there'll be a lot of pictures here. And this is uh, obviously related to my activity as chairman of the International Physiology Quiz. And this is a poster of the 15 quiz. We've now done it 17 times. This year in August was supposed to be the 18th quiz, but obviously that was also COVID-dated and we couldn't have it. So this was a 15th quiz and now the quiz has gone beyond just a student competition. We've, we are now having the last few years about 100 medical schools team from at least 20 countries. And, and in the last five, six years, during the talk, we've been able to provide uh, refresher courses to give teaching inputs to teachers who accompany the teams. And during this year, 2017, we had Walter Boron, a uh, very popular author, most of you will know him, come together with his family to Malaysia. And this was uh, the occasion of the 15 quiz. And so in the program book of this uh, 15 quiz, is a nice picture drawn by one of my younger colleagues that I showed you, the Chinese lady. So this shows you uh, Peninsula Malaysia uh, in the form of a heart. <laughs> Peninsula Malaysia is obviously very narrow. But this shows you the myocardium and basically it shows you the idea that as a result of the activity in Malaysia, which has grown in a very exciting way, we've been able to encourage other countries to start their own quizzes. So we hope that we are giving a physiology life to the rest of the world through this educational activity. And I want to just to uh, run through the countries that have done this. This was the first national quiz in China. So China came for many years and then they were also inspired to start the first quiz in Shizhou Medical College. And this was the representation of the teams from various parts of China. China has at least 100 medical schools. So this quiz done in English uh, has been a focus point, not only to encourage physiology interest, but also to improve the use of the English language. And uh, so this, this was the first quiz in Europe. So now we have actually a nucleus in Romania and, uh, and we had teams coming from Romania for a few times. This is Dr. Simone, head of physiology in the University of Cluj. This is uh, Dr. Adriana. So, so we were able, my wife and I were able to combine a holiday and to conduct a quiz <laughs> in Romania a few years ago. So this is now in its third year, but obviously the quiz in May was also covid dated So all the quizzes were canceled this year. So we're hoping for better times in 2008. Uh, 21, yeah. So uh, let me give you a timeline showing you the extent to which the interest in physiology and using this uh, fun competition in order to promote physiology. So here we are, uh, 2013 was the first Malaysian quiz. We only had seven national teams. And then 10 years later, Sri Lanka started its first quiz. And the quiz is named after Professor Carlos Fonseca, if I got his name correctly, who just passed away recently. And so they've done this now for the last six, seven years. In China, as I mentioned, in Japan also started, and they do this in English, quite, quite an amazing feat uh, in, in Japan. And in 2017, there was a bonus year where we had Indonesia, uh, Mongolia, Philippines, Myanmar, and Professor Susan Barman, who came to Malaysia as one of the refresher invited speakers, was inspired to use this as an activity to spearhead and to highlight the importance of physiology as a separate discipline. And so now in Michigan State, there is an annual uh, regional quiz, not very big, uh, among the undergraduate colleges. And obviously this year, again, it was cancelled. And in 2018, Australia joined us, University of New South Wales in Sydney, started the first quiz. And this is the one in Europe, Romania, uh, first quiz. And then moving on to 2019, Spain. Is this Spain? Yeah, this is Spain. Yeah. 
Spain, in uh, one of the universities in Madrid, started their first quiz last year. But they did this in Spanish because they said they wanted to encourage more teams to join. So they wanted to do it in Spanish. So I'm trying to encourage them to do it in English so that eventually Spain in the west, eastern, western part of Europe can be a nucleus to invite teams from France and Portugal and all that. Yeah. And this is a picture of the Richard in uh, Amriza and uh, took me obviously to the famous uh, temple. Uh, and she hosted the first uh, regional quiz in North India. And I mentioned here, sorry, Samina, I couldn't get a picture on time. <laughs> this was my last trip uh, this year. In February 2020, Prof. Samina Malik uh, hosted a wonderful first national quiz in Pakistan. And she was able to personally, told, she told me she personally went to all the dean and got them to come. And they had, I think we had about at least 40 medical schools coming for the first national quiz in Pakistan uh, this February before Corona and COVID took over all of Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so we're hoping for uh, better times next year. We're not sure whether we can host. Yeah, and yeah. your your wife your wife must accompany you. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. So if we do this in 2021. It will probably be at the end, maybe October, November. Hopefully, things will be better by then. And so let me just uh, very quickly finish uh, so that we keep the time. And that is, um, the quiz is not just uh, educational activity for students, but it's also an, a now a major teaching input for teachers because we'll be able to invite textbook authors to come to the quiz to provide the refresher input. And also the insights into some of the common mistakes made by uh, medical school teams from 90 over medical schools. You analyze the responses in the quiz question and you, you find that certain questions are commonly answered wrongly. It tells you something very interesting. And so we've been able to collect some of this data. And again, uh, this was uh, using the platform of uh, Prof. Kusau's journal, we've been able to share some of this insight uh, from the IMS PQ. Now, very quickly, uh, in conjunction with one of the quiz, we were able to add on what we call uh, a physiology mural drawing competition. And we require each medical schools in different overseas uh, countries, there were about at least 15, I can't remember how many medical schools joined us, but from various countries. So they actually painted on their wall, most of them, those who couldn't paint on their wall, leaving a permanent physiological drawing now, asked to paint it on the big piece of canvas so that they could hang it. Because in some medical schools, it's very strict. You cannot paint on the wall. But this was a very interesting competition. And so now if you go to some of these medical schools, there's a permanent record of this competition. We call it a transmural competition to play on the word uh, physiology, transmural pressure on that. So, and the, this is the uh, book that we published. And this is a winning team from St. Louis University, Philippines. Look at the beautiful drawing and how we can unlock the creativity among the students as they um, are given opportunities to paint. The second prize from China, fourth military medical university. And they use actually the uh, local context of the terracotta to illustrate uh, the mitochondrial chain transport. So you see here. And this is the third prize from Myanmar in the new medical school in Taungi. And again, they use the local context. Uh, you can see this costume people here. And I can't remember what was the physiology. But below every of this uh, beautiful picture is a legend. And they describe the physiology that is permanently embedded in their mural. So this year, as I mentioned, uh, we couldn't have the 18 quiz. So what we wanted to do to fill in the gap, we had an uh, international physiology com competition and we had one submission from Prof. Kusau student too. And we received about 100 physiology comic from 15 countries. And this is now compiled as an e-book. I will send a copy to you. We just compiled this last week. And, uh, and it's 
such a delight to read through the humor, the physiology uh, in some of the in some of the comics. The first prize actually was from University of Valencia by two Spanish girls. I want to show you one comic, and this is the just the front, the first panel. They were asked to draw three to eight panels, and this is from a Malaysian girl who won the second prize. I just wanted to show you the kind of uh, humor and uh, creativity uh, that is possible. And she drew a story about red blood cells complaining about the fact that they will be deprived of intrinsic factor. Let me just show you. And so the first thing that catch your eyes is this banner here, red lives matter. <laughs> so this is so clever, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, because somebody was going for bariatric surgery, and so they fear that they will be deprived of intrinsic factor. So let me just finish quickly. Uh, and this was a, another cartoon drawn by her. I wrote the script and uh, this girl uh, has just drawn this recently, a conversation between adrenal gland and kidney. So we use the word, uh, kidney will be rena, female, and adrenal glands will be Audrey. So hi, Audrey, you always stay ahead and on top of me. Adrenal gland, suprarenal. But Rina, both of us together are so damn important. Sounds like so damn important to keep the pressure normal in the workplace. Thanks, Audrey. I really appreciate that reminder. I really appreciate that reminder. I can't see this here. Uh, hey, we both have common pretty glamorous personality. Glamorous personality. You are right. You are so encouraging, Audrey. You're in my cortex always. So let me finish with the last three, four slides. So talking about crossing border, as a result of the networking among my colleagues in different countries, let me just show you one. This is the island, the archipelago of Indonesia spread out over a large area. And obviously in terms of the COVID corona lockdown, uh, it's now not possible for me to go to Indonesia, although it's very near. I've had four conferences canceled within this year. But because of Zoom and technology, we've been still able to connect through organizing uh, teaching circles. In this case, a discussion about cardiovascular. So we use the word teaching circle to indicate the cardiovascular loop as well as the circle of physiology educators. So we've been able to do this among uh, physiology teachers coming from Sumatra, Kalimantan, uh, Sulawesi, uh, Java, and, and one also from Lombok. And not only with teachers, but we've been also to be able to do this also uh, for the students in different parts of Indonesia. And this was done in the last two months, and giving short conceptual talks. And these talks are just 20, 21 minutes, about 20 minutes. So, and what the first talk I gave was basically the importance of another gradient. And this is the trans membrane sodium gradient uh, and helping students to see again the pattern, unlocking for them the pattern in the functional symmetry whereby the same gradient is so essential in different organs and tissue. So let me finish with uh, a song I wrote for the students uh, based on the popular tune, uh, You Raise Me Up. I think everybody can sing this. And this is written to some endocrine physiology. It's called When I'm Down, Cortisol Increasing. When finals come, high adrenaline. My pancreatic insulin glucagon ratio reduced sustained blood energy. And this is the chorus, You Raise Me Up. So it's obviously the hypothalamic hormone, CRH up, and I can stand the tension. ACTH for my pituitary, and I'll be strong. Prof Cheng always behind me. Finals, I come to ace my physiology. So to end the journey, uh, let me quote from uh, one of my, uh, one, the, in, the end of my inaugural talk. My inaugural talk I gave uh, nine years ago. And this was the, uh, so I call my inaugural talk uh, a physiology journey. If I can find the PDF, I'm happy to send it to you. This is a quotation I wrote in this book, uh, one of my favorite authors, C.S. Lewis. All their life in this world and all their adventures in Narnia had only been the cover and the title page. Now at last, 
We were beginning chapter one of the great story which no one on earth can has read, which goes on forever, in which every chapter is better than the one before. So that's the end of my talk. This is just my contact. I think Dr. Kusa already has that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, it was indeed a wonderful talk, Dr. Chang. I've never heard uh, to this kind of talk uh, ever in my life. It was really, really wonderful. Uh, it, it is, I agree with you, it is so very important to connect to our students while we are teaching. It shouldn't be a monologue going on from one end on the stage to the students. It, should, it shouldn't be a monologue. It should be uh, made uh, interesting, it should be made hilarious and comic. You showed us how we can do it. You showed us how uh, important it is to make our teaching learning processes uh, creative so that it reaches the students. We want uh, finally our students to learn and remember the concepts. So you, uh, you have shown us how easily we can do it uh, by uh, teaching like, uh, like you said, out of box, uh, uh, thinking and then uh, making the concepts clear to our students. It was indeed a wonderful talk. Thank you for that. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I would like to ask the other participants, uh, is there anything you all want to discuss with Dr. Cheng? Are there any questions from you? Please unmute. Please unmute. Tell your name and tell. Ask the question to Professor Chen. I am Mangala. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, yeah, it's not a question actually, uh, just to appreciate your presentation, the talk that you gave uh, just a little while ago. It's a wonderful thing. And also, I don't know how you relate all the things, not only to the physiology itself, but to the, the, the surroundings and the, the activities that you conduct like that it's wonderful and uh, uh, you always try to uh, combine your experiences to teach in and learn in physiology that is to encourage the student learning of physiology thank you so much for the change thank you welcome yeah uh, hello professor hi hi shaheen uh, so I wanted to know whether these uh, quizzes you told is a uh, written quizzes or oral quizzes for the students. Because in our university, we conduct written quizzes after each continuous assessment. Right. So, so uh, the uh, the quizzes are over two days. Uh, the first day uh, is a written quiz. So as I said, we now receive about 90, uh, at least 90 teams. So we have shortlisted the 90 teams to 45 teams for the second day, which is an oral session. So the second day is a full day program because it's like a live, live competition show where you have the quick response buzzer system. So it's very exciting and I hope that some of you can come and witness this. Hopefully next year we can have it. Uh, so it's over two days, yeah. And I, yeah, so, so, so Samina is here. So she'll be able to tell you what happened in this <laughs> time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Ching, for making physiology so beautiful and fun learning. Uh, and uh, it was uh, uh, really a huge uh, event because the students gathered by the name of uh, Professor Ching from all over Pakistan at University of Lahore. And they, they have been uh, having their research on him and they have been exploring his questions and reading his books. And the winning team actually sat with him and had his favorite coffee with him <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in, in, in the university. And uh, uh, they, they told us that uh, uh, this, they, they were actually the smart learners who had gone through all the quizzes and uh, uh, tried to crack the quiz. Uh, by uh, 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 listening again and again to the questions and by understanding the dialect of Professor Ching so that they can quickly understand uh, because you know the dialects vary from place to place and um, and yeah. they, they did a good job and uh, they, they were the fans of Professor Ching and he made their day by having coffee with them. So uh, his love for the students is very, very admirable 
and uh, uh, when it is diffused with the comic style and uh, uh, the creativity in his physiology uh, and he also presented his books to some of the students and even i also received one of his books and one of my students um, uh, heather uh, shirazi he also uh, received the book professor ching has been uh, to uh, various places in the old city lahore and he really appreciated the beauty of lahore so we expect that next time he will again come to us and visit us uh, yes. with his wife and uh, we will have more fun um, uh, and more learning uh, through him and with him and uh, uh, i would also like to ask professor ching that has he ever imagined uh, due to this you know uh, coordinated days in these coordinated days that is it possible to make this quiz online good question. yeah with the large uh, number of teams is is going to be difficult uh, to yeah. to assume the same format because yeah. you what what myanmar did actually myanmar only had uh, have six medical schools so they actually okay. had the on they actually had the first myanmar online end of july so i told them that since you only have six go ahead and try so they did the online quite successfully the only difference one of the main difference obviously is that it has to be on a group team uh, responses because they were afraid that if one of the individual loses connection then there will be a problem so what happens is that they come as a team of three or four so even if one member loses connection poor poor internet then the other member can just chip in so some of this adaptation can be done and uh, if that is done i think uh, it's still possible but i think uh, perhaps the number of teams cannot be too large yeah and what about using breakout rooms try to create an opportunity in which you can use breakout rooms and how to avoid cheating and Uh, how to make it doable uh, within possible, the lockdown? Yeah, phase. yeah. I think it's open. That, to... that would be a great experiment, and let's have yes. this experiment again at University of Lahore. So I'm inviting you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Distantly now, but later on in person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we can so, try to. We can yeah. think about it. Yeah, it to innovate, can be yeah. thought about to innovate it uh, online. But, but obviously, uh, if we can have the students all together. in the same place it's actually quite a yeah quite an exciting event for them to see them see yeah. face to face because yeah. you know in um, most parts of the country the classes has been online and the students have good connections and they have learned uh, how to study online so maybe this quiz online would be uh, an innovation in the quiz itself it's possible yes yeah. Yeah thank you for saying possible <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everything is possible with <laughs> professor ching this is what we know so thank you professor ching for beautiful speech and thank you samina for excellent conversation and thank uh, you for always inviting me professor kusal <laughs> yeah, yeah no no it was a great pleasure and uh, <laughs> dr mangala and all thank you dr vidwa vidya patil the a chair person of the session today and she is professor professor chang professor bidda is also medical education expert and she is the coordinator of our medical education department so apart from being an anesthesiologist and uh, full time so uh, she is also not only professor of anesthesiology also professor of medical education too okay. so she shared yours this one so this is really wonderful and i think that professor chang now this time you must come last time you came to kmc bangalore from here you made a telephone call to me and all that was over but i think that now we, you have to come to our university too for organize a quiz for our national yes, level or international level we can well organize you know very well that we have organized a unesco program where 28 countries i we have connected with a yes. program you have seen all in my facebooks and all you know, yes yes message and all. that's right that's right yeah. yeah so we can do this then being in india having 540 medical school so <laughs> you understand that uh, how much uh, we are connected to each other in a very uh, magnanimous manner so you are already visited several times to india i think that we should conduct and our management and our university authority uh, our honorable vice chancellor dean of faculty of medicine allied health sciences we are all to uh, know it that we, sh we should go for it because of covid 
I hope that you have to visit us post COVID. Little get thank you, thank right. you, right? And, and so. also our students will participate in person to when you will be conducting quiz in Kuala Lumpur. Thank and you. We have done earlier also. That will be great help for us for uh, these these things. I I have only one question. <laughs> one question that. How do you enjoy the life of a quiz master in physiology when you meet your colleagues and students? So, sorry, say that again. Kusa, could you hear? Yeah, I ask you. How do you enjoy you being a celebrity quiz master for physiology among the colleagues and students all over the world? How, how do you enjoy? How do you enjoy yourself as a celebrity celebrity quiz master in physiology? Oh, uh, the 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 quiz has been. Very, uh, very enriching for me because as a result of the quiz, I not only meet the students but I meet uh, colleagues from all over the world. So, and as a result of that, even though I'm partially partially locked down, uh, just the last few months uh, with some of the uh, my colleagues in China who has come for the quiz, they've been able to ask me to to teach physiology to some of the students. And uh, in one was in Shandong, and just last week was in uh, Anhui. Yeah, that's right. So, so that has provided a very useful channel to be able to continue to link up. So I've been able to teach physiology, uh, not in Chinese because I can't teach in Chinese. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yes, I know. Yeah, it. yeah, because a lot of the medical schools in China wants to inter internationalize the medical school. And they want the students to listen to physiology in English. So, so I was happy to help in that way. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and so with with the links also, I've been able to continue my networking through the through the session with the Indonesian physiology teachers as well as with the students through giving some of these uh, short conceptual bites about uh, twenty minutes. Yeah. So that has been one of the one of the best thing that happened. Uh, that has gone beyond the uh, competition, yeah, and of course, getting to know students from 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 all over the world, yeah, that has been very very enriching, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank thank you, Professor Chen. Thank you. So over to uh, Dr. Jyoti. Thank you so much, sir. Now I request Professor uh, Vidya Patil, ma'am, to kindly uh, present certificate to uh, uh, Ming Cheng, sir. <laughs> So I have this honor of uh, presenting the certificate on behalf of our university and department of physiology. Thank you so much. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Yeah, that was a wonderful talk. Sir. Yeah, I will. I will send you by WhatsApp to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, thank you. Please go on. Uh, Gratitude is not only the greatest of all virtues, but the parent of all others. Now it is the time of vote of thanks. I thank Dr. Professor Ming Cheng for accepting our invitation and enriching us about unlocking physiology and crossing borders. I thank Dr. Professor Vidya Patil, Professor and Head Department of Anesthesiology for chairing the session. I thank Dr. Sumangla Patil Mem for supporting us. And I thank uh, Professor Kusal K. Das, who is the key person of the research club. And I thank all the participants for uh, participating in, in the uh, 41st research club meet. Thank you once again. I request all members, all participants kindly enable your videos so that we can take a screenshot for documentation. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Please enable me. So meantime, uh, I have uh, one announcement of uh, next uh, our research club speaker is uh, Thiago Moriera, PhD, Associate Professor, Institute of Biomedical Science, University of Sao Paulo, Brazil. So he will be professor will be presenting on new perspective of the control of carbon dioxide and H dependent drive to breathe. He is a guest speaker in our January 2021 batch. Thank so you. I request all to kindly participate in the next uh, research club also with uh, Professor Thiago Moriera. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Yeah, I think photograph has oh, is is done. Gallery view. Yeah, gallery view has taken. Did you take all of you gallery view? Is Dr. Thiago Moria? He is a student of my friend, Professor Benedito Machado. Professor Cheng knows very well that uh, we are all in the IUPS. Right. So he is a student and uh, is one of the distinguished uh, press scientists at the moment, or the youngest scientist with a very high wave, uh, what can H index at the moment. So Thiago will be joining to uh, next month Great. as a guest speaker. So Dr. Jyoti, the photograph has been taken, the snap has been taken. Dr. Jyoti, so you are Dr. Jyoti. Yes, hello, sir. Yes, sir. A photo, a photo has taken. Yes, sir. Any uh, screenshots, sir? Thank you all for being with us. So, kind request you all to uh, join for the next uh, session. Also, we are going to share the link with you all. Next year. For the next. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank 2020. You very much. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello, Anika. I see you. <laughs> ah, hello, Dr. Singh. How are you? Okay, yeah. I remember I, I came to Malaysia That's and right. uh, That's participated right. under the direction of Professor Arif Siddiqui. That's right. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a lifetime um, uh, event for us. Yeah. Thank you again, Prof. Kusal. <laughs>